This is a review over chapter five. So this entire chapter was about integrals. So before we go through a section by section review, let's first define what an integral is. So the integral is just the area underneath a curve or underneath a function. Just the area between this function and the x-axis. And in chapter five, we learned the math way of how to calculate this integral. But before we did that, in section 5.1, we learned the really long way of how to estimate the area underneath the curve. And you remember how we did that was we used these things called Riemann sums. Riemann sums was where we uh, drew rectangles on our curve, found the area of each rectangle, added it together, and used that as an estimate. So for example, if I were given this function right here, and they wanted R3, meaning using our right endpoints, and three rectangles on this interval from 0 to 6. First thing I would need to do is find my delta x, which is just the difference in my endpoints, divided by the number of rectangles that they want, which would give me 2. So here's my delta x. This is the width of each rectangle that I'll draw. And I'd go on my graph and move over to for however many rectangles they want on whatever width. To find my area, I would then find what the height of each rectangle is, what my y value is, multiply that by the width, add them all together, and use that as my estimate for the area underneath this function. In this section, we also learn these things called power rules. Um, power rules, the way you solve those problems, is you wanna divide up your function so that each part matches one of these rules either in terms of j, j squared, j cubed, whatever your variable is, it'll match one of these, and then you're able to just plug in the formula that they give you. Um, and remember, this n here is just some number that they give you, and just plug in n wherever you see that value. Okay, um, so this is the long way of how to estimate integrals, or how to estimate the area underneath the function. But for the rest of the chapter, we learn the actual math way of how to do these things. So, for a lot of the rest of the video, we're going to go through each integral rule that we learned, starting over here with just x squared, or just x to any exponent. The way you find the integral of this function is you add 1 to the exponent, so x squared becomes x cubed, and then you divide by that new exponent. So I could write this as x cubed over 3, or I could write it as 1 third times x cubed. All right, the integral of sine of kx for this function, I'm going to bring this coefficient out to the front and flip it. So it becomes 1 over k times um, integral of sine is negative cosine. And remember, this angle here always stays the same. No matter what we do, it'll always be that same kx. And similar over here with cosine, I bring this coefficient out to the front and flip it. So it's 1 over k times integral of cosine is sine kx, remember angle never changes. Integral of secant squared, kx, same thing. Flip the k, bring it out to the front. Integral of secant squared is just tangent of this same angle. Integral of e to the kx is, <laughs> you might be seeing a pattern here, 1 over k times, uh, remember how the derivative of e to the x was just e to the x? Same thing here, integral of e to the x is e to the kx. And over here, we have 1 over x, or x to the negative first power. Here, we can't use our power rule, because if we were to add 1 to x to the negative 1, it'd become x to the 0, and that's just weird. So we have a special rule for this type of function. The integral of 1 over x is ln absolute value of x. OK, so section 5.2 was the indefinite integral. and Actually, I would lose a point on my test if I wrote it like this, because for indefinite integrals, when you don't have values here, you have to add a plus c to each part. So add plus c to all of these things, and this would be your indefinite integral. Types of problems they might ask you with uh, these types of functions is maybe find the initial value. In that case, they're asking us to actually find this c. And to do that, we would need to take the integral of whatever they give us, and we have to use some other information that they provide as well, maybe like a value on the function or a point or something. Plug that in and solve for my unknown c. All right, but we also learned about definite integrals. Definite integrals, really similar, except now we have actual values on our integral that they're interested in. So 
um, for this function right here. They're interested in the value from 3 to 0 of this function. So what we do here is we find the integral of this function, and then we're going to plug in our top number into the function minus whatever we get when we plug in this bottom number. This is number 11 in section 5.4. So solving through it, we take the integral of this function, add 1 to the exponent, and this becomes t to the fourth. When I bring this out to the front, I'll have 2 times 1 over 4. That simplifies down to 1 half, minus, same thing here, uh, t squared, when I add 1 to the exponent, becomes t cubed, and 6 times 1 third will give me 2 t cubed. And this is from 3 to 0. And this is where an extra step comes in. So now I'll plug in this top number into the entire um, integral that I just calculated, and subtract whatever I get when I plug in the bottom number. Plugging in this top value, this becomes 1 half 0 to the 4th minus 2 times 0 cubed. All of this minus, when I plug in my bottom number, I get 1 half 3 to the 4th minus 2 times 3 cubed. But remember, this is minus this entire quantity. And simplifying this out a little bit, over here, I'll just have 0 minus, um, in this quantity, 3 to the 4th is 81 over 2 minus 27, oh sorry, 54. Um, and key point here is this negative is going to distribute to both of these um, terms. So this will become minus 81 over 2 and minus a negative plus 54. And when you add this together, you should get 27 over 2. All right, so indefinite integrals, we take the integral and just add a plus c at the end. Definite integrals, we take the integral, we plug in our top number, and subtract whatever we get, the entire quantity, um, when we plug in our bottom number. All right. Um, for section 5.7, we learned another integral rule, and this is called u sub. We use u sub whenever we have a function within a function um, to try to simplify things, rewrite it in another way, so that we can get it in a form where we know how to take the integral of it. So for number 35, for example, in 5.7, we're given this function, and we want to find the integral. Well, looking at how it is now, I don't know how to take the integral of that. So I'm going to use u sub, and I'm going to set part of the function equal to u. Generally, you want to pick a part of the function that's within another function. In this case, I'm going to set this um, inner part inside the radical, x squared plus 9, equal to u. All right. And remember, my game plan for these types of problems is to rewrite this entire function in terms of just u. So I have a quantity equal to u. But remember, I'll need to replace this dx with a du. So I take the derivative of this entire thing. And on the left here, I get 2x dx plus 0, because derivative of 9 is just 0, equals the derivative of u is just du. All right, and now I solve for this dx, so I have a value to plug back in here. And I get that dx is equal to du over 2x. Okay, subbing in this value and this value back into my original question that they asked me, this now becomes uh, the integral of x over, I have x squared plus 9 is just u, so that's just rad u. And I have that my dx is equal to du over 2x. Now from here, if your function isn't already written in terms of only u's, hopefully something will cancel so that you're left with only u's. If something doesn't cancel and you have two variables, that means that something went wrong. You'll have to go back, either pick a new part to set equal to u, or try some other method of integration. All right, but what I have here, this works. I have the integral of, I'll rewrite this as a negative exponent, u to the negative 1 half du. And I have this 1 half out here in the front. And this is something that I know how to take the integral of. So using my basic integral rules that I just went over, I'll add 1 to the exponent, and this becomes u to the 1 half. And I'll flip this number over, bring it to the front. So remember, I still have this 1 half out here, times, when I flip this over, I get 2 uh, plus c. Simplifying this, this is just u to the 1 half plus c. All right. Now, we care about you as a person, however, we don't want our answer in terms of you. So what we do here 
is we take whatever we set u equal to and we plug it back in so that our answer has the same variables that we started with. So now this becomes plugging in what I said equal to u, x squared plus 9 to the 1 half plus c. And that would be my final answer for this problem. Okay, last section, 5.8, we learned more integral rules. Um, in this section, we learned a couple different rules. These problems are kind of confusing, but basic idea for those types of problems is you want to take whatever function they give you and try to get it to match one of the new rules that you learned in this section if you don't know how to take the integral of it already. Also, a lot of times with these problems, you won't only need to make it match one of these formulas, but you'll also probably need to use, use u sub as well. All right, so going over these rules, integral of 1 over rad 1 minus x squared, that's just inverse sine of x plus c. Um, integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 just gives you inverse tangent of x plus c. And the integral of this whole function here is just um, inverse secant x plus c. And last rule that I have here, integral of b to the x is just b to the x over ln b plus c. Okay, so here was a review of chapter 5. If you're watching this video, you probably have a chapter 5 test coming up. So good luck studying. Remember to review all these rules, go over practice problems in your homework, um, and you probably also have a final coming up in like a week. So um, hopefully you'll also have time to re review other sections and other chapters. Remember that there's videos for each section in every chapter um, of all of Calc 1. So review this chapter, review other chapters, and good luck studying. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either Schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.